Hi, I'm Kai, and I'm the lead developer for upcoming RPG Essentia. And today I was working on our overworld menu. So the one that you usually see during gameplay. And I tried to go for something very similar to the one that you'd find in Secret of Mana. Wait, let me pull it up real quick. So it's pretty much a radial menu that just rotates and the cursor stays at the same position. So that's what we are going for. And thanks to a lot of work <laughs> and probably some brain damage, I finally figured out how to do it. So I think we've got it down pretty well. Let me put it in full screen. We got something really nice going on here. So we got all the rotations. Uh, don't mind the white flickering. That's just something I can fix really fast. It has something to do with the button. So pretty much that's what we're going for. That's what uh, I created. It's probably going to be touched up visually a bit more, but that's pretty much what we're going for. That's the current plan. And today I wanted to show you guys how exactly I did it. Because I had someone on Reddit ask if I could share my results in case I achieved this, so here we are. So, to run for this real quick and just explain the logic. What we have here is obviously a widget that we can't see right now. Um, I have to get out of the animations. Do, 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 let's just, oh, there we are. Okay, there we are. So what we have is just these widget elements. So we have a base window, which is a canvas. And then we have this image, which is just the circle to, you know, uh, symbolize, you know, it's rotating. And then we have the buttons. So these are buttons. The way I do it, you can also just have them be images. It's not that important. Uh, the important thing is just that you have your icons right here. And you first start them off and sort them in a manner that they, you know, kind of line up with the circle the way I did here. So what you have to do next is that you create animations for the different cases. So let's say I want to rotate from characters to abilities. So I have an animation. I made an animation. If you don't know how to make animations for widgets, there are many amazing tutorials for that. It's fairly simple. What you have to do is just that you create an animation right here and add, you add a track. You can just use the icon, for example. I have the ability icon. I can use that one right here. I can add a track to it, a transform track. And then I can just, you know, transform it how I want it. Let's, for example, just add some keyframes right here and add some more keyframes at second one. And what we can do now is that we just move it around on a timeline, for example. Let's just move it to the right a bit, like like here. We see another node is set. And if we play it, it just moves back and forth. So pretty much that's how it works. It's pretty simple. Uh, if you need a tutorial, you can still watch, this obvi watch it, obviously. So this is quite a bit of uh, busy work. But you only have to make four animations. That's a good thing, at least in my case. <laughs> So, uh, depending on how many icons you have, you have to make uh, one more animation. So, let's see, for example, I have this animation right here. It's just one animation going from characters to abilities. What you have to do next to play these animations is that you have to create a play animation forward node. You can either either use a play animation forward node or if in the case that you have to go back because obviously you'll also have to go back like if you want to go back from abilities to characters you have to use a play animation reverse node. So pretty much what this does is it plays the node in reverse. This way you don't have to make double the animations. It just saves you a bit of time and does the same thing, right? So the way I did it is that for example I have button inputs right here and depending on what value I have on this int variable I created I rotate to a specific position uh, I, I play a specific animation that is for example we start with a default value every time we open the menu we are always on characters this is always the first option that is given to us and that means I didn't mean to open Visual Studio, uh, don't mind that. <laughs> oh god, no, it's lagging a bit. Yeah, I'm not I'm not editing this video, so <laughs> you guys have to skip forward 10 seconds. Uh, 
Come on, my, 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 my project is frozen. This is annoying. Visual Studio is... I hate it. Yeah, let me just close it. Cancel. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. We are, we are back. We are back, fortunately. So, next thing we have to do is that we have our first selection right here, which is always, like, if you press A, for example, which is forward, um, which would rotate us to the ability icon, we have to play the first anim animation, which I named Rot 122, and we are playing the animation that rotates us to the ability icon. So, what are we doing next? We have to set the selection again. So, in this case, I have two directions I have to go in and what you can use one value in the switch for multiple animations. So what you have to do, what I did in this case is that if I go to A, the next animation I play is saved, let's call it that, on the four index. So uh, next animation would be the uh, abilities to settings. Uh, we're going from abilities to settings, so free to this one right here. That's the animation that we're playing after we did this one for the first time. So if we press A, we set this to 4, and depending on that, it plays the next animation. So next thing we do, we set it on. Wait, this isn't even the right one. Yeah, next thing we do, we set it on 5, That's this place the next animation. And once we've pretty much, you know, cycled through all of it, we have to set it back on 0, so we can start back up here. I think if I want to visualize this more properly and more easily for beginners, I'd have to do it here because uh, this is more linear. So, same case, we start with 0, we go to 1, that's the next animation. And going from that, we go to 2 and we go to 3. So, the important thing is to enable yourself to do the following. So, uh, let's check this. Going back and forth. So, I'm pressing A and D. I'm pressing A and D to go back and forth. What you need to do is that you need to create a few more cases. That's what I did here. That's why it was a bit confusing up here. So, you have the first... Four cases, let's say, in this case, reserved to just go into one direction. But what do we do if we press the A button and uh, we encounter a case where we already rotated with the D button? So let's say we rotated one forward with the D button and we want to go back. So what we have to do is that we take like the five case, for example. We are on case five now. Uh, that sets on sets us at a certain point in the menu and once we are on case 5 but we press A we, we want to rotate back so what we do is that we play the animation that allows us to rotate back to selection 4 is where we like came from in the animation before that <laughs> I know I explained that a bit ba badly but I hope you guys can you know kind of understand this it is it is a bit much you have to work with the switch case and just, you know, think about it a bit, make it work, see, just maybe play around with it first, just do like the linear version, just going into one direction first. And once you're done with that, you can uh, do the other cases. So you can going ba do back and forth or going into the other direction. So the way, the reason why I did it like this is first and foremost, that's just how my, <laughs> that's what I came up with, right? But also, what we can do next, because obviously these are, this is just a menu selection. We want to go in, into the character menu after we rotate it to it. What we can do, the cool thing is that we can just take the index that we currently have and uh, do another switch case. So what I would do, for example, what I will do, for example, right here is that I use the selection again and I have these switch cases. Right here I noted down all the switch cases. For example, if the index is currently on 0, I'm going into the character menu. If I'm on 1 or 6, I'm going into the portions menu. 2 and 5 settings and further. So uh, what I would do is that I would, you know, um, 
just pull a node out of here and just switch to the next widget and menu pretty much. And this is just, you know, a neat method to switch between all your different menus. I think it's once you get your, well, once you get through my uh, bad explanation, <laughs> I think it's pretty easy to do and replicate. If there are any further questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. I'll probably answer all of them. There won't be too many, I guess. And yeah, thank you guys. Bye.